So I want to perform for you um, a live kind of looping sequencing routine and then talk a little bit about some of the aspects which, which I use to create that. And then I wanna, I'm going to reload a different set on machine and just show my kind of writing jamming process, which is quite similar, but to me kind of different. You can see up here as well as we've got Machine Studio and the Complete Control S61 keyboard. So that's all on the fly, um, one take, mistakes and all. I love that creative workflow where there's, there's an element of risk. Like I could uh, sit up here and pre-program and press play, go and make myself a coffee, get a drink, but it's not kind of how I like to work. I love that element of risk and creativity, which you can only really get by having nothing prepared and, and just jump in there. If I just you know, briefly go back on what I did, just to recap for those of you who are interested in machine. I grew up using the MPC, the 3000 mainly, which is an amazing machine and sampler. So it was interesting for me as an analog purist to make the transition to the digital world, because I really did not want to do that. But then, you know, when I was showing machine, it was Mark I at the time, and someone just kind of walked me through it, what it did. I was like, wow, that's incredible. 
And now, you know, we're a couple of generations later, the Machine 2, the Studio, the, the Micro and all that. And it's really become its own kind of vibe and its own instrument. So basically, I've got uh, multiple banks set up. So in the first bank, I had a drum kit set up. These are all basically taken from stock native instrument sounds. Like for the purposes of really showcasing this stuff, I wanted to go through the library and find things which really resonated with me. Um, of course, you can use your own sounds. I ended up, when I first got on machine, just bringing in all my MPC sounds and putting them in there and, and that kind of thing. But for this purpose, this is all kind of factory stuff. So I had a kit on the A bank, another kit on the B bank. So I programmed up those two as loops. And then I have a, um, a string patch, which is the Session Strings, I believe. Yeah, Session Strings Pro. Really lush sample strings. There's a lot of interesting uh, different articulations with that. I was using it just basically as a, as a string pad. Um, the bass sound I was using is from Razor. One cool thing with this is that whatever sound I have on machine, I have immediate access to the parameters on complete control. So, you know, I do that with other controllers and software, but I'd have to map it all and, you know, set it all up. In this case, it's all pre-mapped. I also use the synth lead, which is the Monarch. Uh, Monarch is like a, it's, it's native's mini MOOC. It's a great synth, great kind of replica of that vibe. I'm a big fan of 70s, like, synth fusion and funk and soul and jazz, things that came out of that. So for me, that kind of sound is... Um, that sound's always, always fun for me. A little bit of white noise. And now I change pad bank and introduce an arpeggiator. So in this case, I have rounds, one of the nuisance from um, Complete 10. And on the, on the keyboard here, we've got an up button. So if the up button's off right now... And that's the sound. If I turn the out button on, and you can hear straight away there's a lot of different variables I can play with. You know, in real time on the keyboard, the speed, the direction up and down, the dynamic, the gate, all the things you'd you know, want to do with an arpeggiator. When I'm sequencing that, the cool thing is in the uh, machine, it's recording the arpeggiator, it's recording every note of it. So it's not recording just the, the chord I'm playing and then the arpeggiator is on, it's actually recording every note. So you can go in there and edit that, mess around with it, it's a lot of fun. Um, I had a, a, a filter on that, you know, using all the, all the building effects again, where... <laughs> And again, it's like getting into that kind of analog headspace, for me anyway, um, which, which I really dig. Then for the second half of the joint, I took the tempo down, it was like at 140, went down to about 100, had a new drum kit. Again, it's a stock Native Instruments drum kit. Um, I can't remember what, which one it is, but uh, it's one of them. <laughs> so had the beat coming up on that, had a little synth sound on there using the modulation strip here. You're able to really affect that in real time. That was Razor, that sound, for those who are interested. Had a synth bass off the retro machines. And then um, after that, which is one of the fun things with the keyboard, I had this piano sound. It's a really nice piano, it's called the Gentleman. But the cool thing with that is that in scale mode, there's a scale button next to the art button. In scale mode, it basically helps you, I think it's called play assistance, which is nice. We all need some play assistance in our lives sometimes. In this case, I've basically told it to play in C minor, pentatonic, and harmonize each note I play with the first, the third, and the fifth. So effectively, I get a three note chord with one, one key. I can change those parameters, so, for example... I can change the scale from minor pentatonic to, say, 
Let's go to a gypsy scale. Which is a lot of fun. It can really open up a whole other world for you. It was an interesting conversation. We had a lot when I was first helping showcase this. People were like, yeah, but then it's playing for you. Like, what's the point? I grew up playing piano. I played piano all my life. I can quite comfortably play a gypsy scale with the chord. It's not a problem. But I cannot play this. I just can't do it. You know, it's like, it's impossible. So it's just fun to find different shapes and things which give you the opportunity to be creative. There's also chord sets with this. These chord sets are created so that you can have a chord progression. There's eight chord progressions, eight major, eight minor. And you can just play around and find chord progressions you like. It's a great kind of writing tool. So again, it's based on kind of one finger play. And you get these progressions happening and different chord sets which are another kind of interesting way to be creative. I mean, for me, the tools are all about being creative. I finished off with a, a patch where on machine, I have a piano linked with three synths. So basically, I'm, I'm chaining the pads together. So by playing one pad, it's triggering all, three, all four pads. So effectively, when I play something, you're getting all those sounds together. That's pretty much the breakdown of, of that as a routine. When I'm writing music as a composer, I'll sit down at the acoustic piano and just play and write music. Other times, I'll be you know, on the computer clicking around. Other times, I'll be making beats. And it just kind of comes from which, wherever the inspiration comes from. Actually, this morning, before I came here, is I loaded up a new session, a blank session, loaded up some drums, some percussion, some more drums, some basses some pads and keys, some pads, some synths, a few different sounds. And I, I basically wanted to create a blank template, like a template where I can go in and just make music. So for me, this is the kind of vibe where if I want to create you know, groove-based music, a club track, or I'm doing a remix and I want to just get to the heart of, of, of the musical vibe of it, this is a typical setup. So basically, I'm just looking at sounds. and just finding things I like. So then I've got a kind of a beat vibe I'm, I'm enjoying. For me, a lot of this, I'm, I'm really not precious about this process either. I spent years searching for the perfect beat. And I realized there was no perfect beat. This is just a beat. You know, it's like some of my favorite beats. You know, Jay Dill is a huge inspiration and like an amazing producer to me. I listened through hundreds of Dilla beats and not, I know to him none of them were the perfect beat. They're just beats. You know, Carl Craig, whoever, Moody Man, same thing, it's just, just some beats. So it's a matter of just finding the vibe I'm enjoying and seeing what happens next.
at that point, I'm like, yeah, that's a cool vibe. You know, I'd probably save that and now. Let's change the vibe completely. And it just becomes a process. Thank you. <laughs> so it just becomes a process of flow and creativity and, and fun. That's the reason I think we all do this. Nice to get paid off it, but if I'm not enjoying myself, I'm not, it's not that cool. You know, there's very little kind of processing going on beyond just the mix. Um, this is just like a, like a sketch pad for me. If I'm like, that's the jam. Then I'm, I may like lay out some different alternate patterns and maybe a bridge, a change, or you know, rework the drums. I might just throw the music out. Yeah, I like those, yeah, I like those drums. Let me you know, try something different. So it just becomes a process of flow like that. And in this instance, with this kind of combination, I love the kind of instantaneous and uh, immediacy. The immediacy of just being able to jump on here and You know, and like, and like mess with the sound in, in real time. That's basically it. 